Welcome to Detroit. This is the BET Shady 2.0. Cypher, 2011, myself, Slaughterhouse, and Yellow Wolf. What up guys, it's your boy Ali, and welcome to Hip Hop Forever. Now before Slaughterhouse's inception, each member of the group had a solo career and was already established in hip hop. Joe Budden, Crooked Eye, Joel Ortiz, and Royce the 59 got their start in the 90s. They released a lot of projects and singles that hip hop peers would deem lyrical and became respected within the genre. Fast forward to 2009. During this time, rumors suggested Slaughterhouse was going to sign to Shady Records. They made a cameo in Drake's Forever video alongside Eminem, confirming the rumors to be true. On June 18, 2010, Eminem released Recovery and it sold 741,000 copies in the first week. The success of this album gave Eminem the momentum that he needed to put the spotlight on other artists. And on January 12, 2011, the signing of Slaughterhouse to Shady Records became official. Before the group signed with Shady Records, and before they became a group, Crooked Eye, Joe, Joel, and Royce recorded a song called Slaughterhouse on Joe Budden's album, Halfway House. When I was a teen, I used to pack 380. Now I'm spitting, sitting between Shady and Joe. Hey. Their chemistry was instantaneous. Each MC was trying their very best to outdo the other. It was magic. So magical in fact that they decided to keep the momentum going by becoming an official rap group, releasing songs under the name Slaughterhouse. The public's response was positive. Slaughterhouse was hot and needed to drop a project. So in 2009, they released their debut album titled Slaughterhouse. If we're talking about sales, the album didn't blow up that well, but it put them on the map. It sold about 18,000 copies in the first week, prompting the members of the group to pursue a deal with a major label. During their time on Shady Records, Slaughterhouse only released one album. They were slated to release another titled Glass House, but it didn't come out because the group disbanded. So the question is, what happened to Slaughterhouse and why did the group split up? Let's discuss. Slaughterhouse, welcome, welcome to our house tour. We just leave in Dallas. What up, Nickel? In 2012, Slaughterhouse released their second album, Welcome to Our House. It peaked at number 5 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 50,000 copies in the first week. Lyrically, every member of the group brought their A-game, they played off each other well and delivered a solid album. There are introspective songs on the album, club songs and songs to bump in the whip. It's very diverse, however despite delivering a more accessible album, day one fans of Slaughterhouse were not too pleased with Slaughterhouse's new sound. It was less gritty, more pop, and severely different from the first album. Ironically enough, before Slaughterhouse recorded their debut album, they had doubts. Would they blow up on shady records? How could they reach the radio? Their constant self-reflection affected them, and as a result, they chose to record songs that were more commercial. One look at the track list suggests Eminem's input was all over the album. In fact, he's credited on about 14 tracks, and also appears in about three of them as a featured artist. Eminem put a lot of work in, but the question is, were all his efforts in vain. Here's what works the 5-9 thinks about this. We started looking at criticism. Will they be able to make songs for the radio? Will they be able to live up to the hype of being signed to Shady and making songs that can be commercially viable? We started making a lot of single type sounding songs. Then by the time Eminem got a hold of it and got a hold of all the music we were doing, I think the songs that he decided to pick for the project were just too many of the commercial sounding songs. That's just him doing it how he probably would have done with his own albums. Because when he works on something, he gives it his all. He puts the work into it like it's his own project. So he just sat back and trusted his judgment on that. In my opinion, Eminem is a good producer. He has produced records for some of the biggest names in the industry, Jay-Z, Exhibit, 50 Cent, and the list goes on. He has proven his ability to produce a classic, and his production credits are immense. However, despite all the work that he has put in, there are some people that are not a fan of Eminem's production style. Eminem is usually very hands-on. Whenever an artist joins Shady Records, he gives them a few features, he promotes them whenever he can, and most importantly, is involved in a lot of their album's production. I wanted them to be huge, man. I really did. I, I wanted a group that lyrical. It definitely hurt my feelings a lot when the album didn't do good. So here lies the problem. When Eminem got involved in Slaughterhouse, 
their sound changed. Day one fans of Slaughterhouse felt like Eminem changed Slaughterhouse's sound too much and attributed most of the album's shortcomings to him. Like Roy said, Eminem picked the commercial sounding songs for the album, so he is partly to blame for the way the album turned out. After Slaughterhouse's debut album didn't do amazing numbers and people accused Shady Records of watering down their album, Eminem took the critiques he heard to heart and made the conscious decision to distance himself from the group's next project. I didn't want to touch it I didn't, with my production because I felt like if, what if that is the reason yeah. that they didn't sell albums? I don't want to hinder that. Now Eminem's involvement aside, there's something to be said about groups in hip hop. In all my years of observing the genre from a distance, I've learned a few things. One of them being that hip hop groups generally don't last. Think about Motor Inc. Before it became a label, it was supposed to be a group consisting of Jay-Z, DMX and Ja Rule. However, the group didn't become official because Ego got in the way. Jay wanted to be better than X and vice versa. You can learn more about this in my What Happened to Murder Inc. video. G-Unit went through a similar situation, NWA. Hell, this doesn't only apply to hip hop. Think about Justin Timberlake and Beyonce. They all outgrew their group and became big artists because they realized they could make more money on their own. Sometimes it's inevitable. Why split the pie four ways when you can eat it all? In Slaughterhouse's case, Joe believed he wasn't being compensated well. And as a result, he left the group mentally. We gave him another album and next thing I know I hear Joe talking about who got that money, who, who got what money. Now according to Eminem, Joe was misinformed and couldn't get more money from the label because Slaughterhouse didn't do well sales wise. As I mentioned earlier, the album sold about 50k in the first week. It was a huge improvement from their first album which did about 18k. However, despite the group's increase in sales, they didn't make a profit. But the album didn't do much to even recoup the first budget. Shady and Interscope were willing to overlook the group's mediocre sales performance. They offered Slaughterhouse another album and invested money in the project. However, it didn't come out because of Joe's departure. Then we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the second album that never came out. Now that's the problem with the group situation. When one member decides to go rogue or tarnish the reputation of their former group members, aka the game, the group never recovers. For instance, Slaughterhouse minus Joe Budden made an appearance on Eminem's music to be murdered by. Each artist brought their A game. M got the last verse as usual. It was a dope song, but doesn't it feel like it's missing something? Or someone? Maybe it's just me. Joe already left mentally he just didn't tell nobody if he would have told us i would have been like all right cool well shit. I, no need for me to go flying out to detroit and to new york and having all these meetings and conference calls and doing all this shit, trying to make sure that the ball is moving on slaughterhouse glass house whatever there's no need he's not in he's not feeling it cool but he didn't do that before Eminem dropped music to be murdered by, Joe Budden made an appearance on the My Expert Opinion podcast. During the interview, he mentioned being retired from rap, something we've heard Joe say before, and also said he would not be interested in doing anything Slaughterhouse related, unless the group left Shady Records. We're just not making music because Joe is not making music. And I won't even throw that out the window. In Joe's mind, there's a world where things can coexist, but not in that situation. We can put things together, y'all can't monetize until we do. And that's how I act. So nah, I'm not putting nothing out with Slaughterhouse unless Slaughterhouse is away from Shady and we own our own shit. Clearly, Joe is self-aware. He knows that he's a huge part of the reason why Slaughterhouse doesn't exist and seems to feel justified in his actions. He heard the group and he knows it. But luckily for him, he had his podcast to fall back on. At the end of the day, Joe is all about money and ownership. When he was on Everyday Struggle, the chemistry between him and DJ Academics was evident. Everyday Struggle was a hit. It updated fans on the current state of hip hop and created a debate between the younger and older generation. Say again? You say I'm left off bad and booze. What'd you say? You say I'm left off bad and booze. However, despite the show's success, Joe left. The reason being, he didn't agree with the amount that he was getting paid. Recently, Joe removed his podcast from Spotify for the same reason. It appears Joe always gets to a point where he feels like he deserves the biggest slice of the pie. He wants to own it all. But is he a man who knows his worth or one that will eventually overplay their hand? I'll leave it up to you guys to decide. Now what have the other members of the group said about Joe? For one, Royce believes Joe should apologize to Eminem for slandering Revival. For those of you that don't know, Joe savagely attacked Eminem's Revival album after viewing the track list and only listening to a few songs. On track Untouchables, this is Throw it in rice. Amp. Throw it in rice. Okay. In simple terms, he called it trash. Now, Bizarre of D12 also believes Joe should apologize. But then one day, that bipolar, schizophrenic, crazy ass mind of yours wouldn't allow you to let loose 
and you went fucking ballistic. You went fucking crazy. Now you got your opinion. You don't like the revival album. Cool. That's cool. You got your opinion. Fuck it. You ain't feeling it. But you went in, bro. Shady Records pays your fucking bills. At the time, M was essentially Joe's boss. So Royce and Bazaar believed that Joe spoke out of turn. Joe could have spoken to Eminem in private instead of letting it all out on a public platform like Everyday Struggle. Now other members of Slaughterhouse have spoken out against Joe. More specifically, Crooked Eye had a lot to say. For one, Crook took offense when Joe said the group was mesmerized by Eminem's star power. Evidently, Joe had minor issues with M. When, I'm sorry y'all, when, um, when Joe did his uh, revival criticism, you know what I'm saying? See, I knew something that the public didn't know. I knew that there was something there that Joe had an issue with the label and M already. So when I heard the criticism, I knew Joe kind of crossed the line. It appears every member of Slaughterhouse minus Joe wanted to release a second album with Shady. They felt like they let the fans down with their previous offering and wanted to give the fans a project that is more organic. You might want to get out the contract. You might see getting out the contract is I'm a dip out, go ghost. I ain't going to call nobody, talk to nobody, barely. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm going to just say some wild shit and it's going to blow up everything. And then I'm, we going to all be out the contract. That could be a strategy, right? But guess what else could be a strategy? Honor the agreement. Objectively speaking, Joe could be right. He felt like Shady Records didn't do a good job at managing Slaughterhouse, and Joel Ortiz agrees with him to some extent. Mm -hmm. So, right, the music yeah, was good, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, music we rap good. well? Yep, yeah, yeah. you're best in the game. Okay, so if it has nothing to do with music, then it has to do with business. In my opinion, Slaughterhouse was a dope group. They united in a time when lyrical rappers were greatly needed. Swag rappers all over the radio, and being an MC was becoming a less prestigious title. There was a climate shift. Hip hop was becoming less lyrical, and at the time, Slaughterhouse was the light at the end of the tunnel. They tried. They linked up with Eminem and tried to go pop, but despite their best efforts, they were not able to deliver a commercial project that their fans wanted. Now I know what a lot of you guys are probably thinking. Would Slaughterhouse blow up again if they reunited today? All they need is a few singles, a label that will promote them, and a hot album, right? Wrong. Personally, I love the idea of Slaughterhouse as a group, but do you remember what happened when G-Unit reunited? They were hot for a couple of weeks and dropped a couple of mixtapes. Things looked promising for G-Unit until their hype died down. The truth is, we all want our favorite artists to keep making music. What would happen if State Property reunited? What about D12? Nostalgia keeps us in the past. It keeps us longing for what once was, but essentially, our history can't be recreated. In reality, Slaughterhouse doesn't have momentum anymore. And if they dropped an album today, not that many people would check for it. It's just a different time. Day one fans might cop their project, but sadly, the vast majority of hip hop has moved on. Now, I personally would want to hear another Slaughterhouse project, but at this point, it looks like it's never going to happen. They might drop a single or two, but a whole album, I don't see it happening. Slaughterhouse gets about 290,000 monthly views on Spotify. Lately, it appears like every member of Slaughterhouse is doing their own thing. Crooked is still making music, and he's also in the content game. Royster59 is back to dropping music, and so is Joel. Joe Budden just started his own network, so in essence, everybody in Slaughterhouse is doing their own thing. In conclusion, Slaughterhouse ended for two reasons. One, because Joe Budden left the group, and two, because of bad management from Shady Records. Joe, now I'm talking to Joe. If you wanted to get out of the contract, Joe, all you had to do is sit down and say, yo, I'm not feeling this contract. That's what we do as businessmen. We in a business. All of us signed our names on that agreement. You sit down at the negotiation table with Paul M. Shady Staff, Slaughterhouse and Slaughterhouse Management and you say, yo, I'm not feeling the situation. All right, Joe, what's happening? What's good? What's, what's wrong with it? This is what's wrong with it. I'm not feeling it. And then we either try to fix the problems in there totally, then we figure out how to get to that phase. You feel me? But if you dip out by your own admission, if you dip out and you don't communicate with nobody, it's no way we gonna get to a solution. Slaughterhouse dropped a few mixtapes in an EP that I didn't cover in this video. In my opinion, all of them are better than their debut album under Shady Records. So if you're a Slaughterhouse fan, they're definitely worth checking out.
That's it for me, man. It's your boy Ali. What happened to Slaughterhouse in your opinion? Let me know down below. Also, if you have any video requests, be sure to let me know as well. Knew what happened to video dropping next week. So look out for that. Peace.